Let's talk about strain in a little more detail. Because we need, we need to know what strain is mathematically to develop these closer relationships. Well, strain, what is strain in words from 319? Change in length over original length, right? So let's say we have a, in one dimension we have a bar that has some original length, hello. I'm going to pull on the end of it, and the bar is going to deform. And so it has new length, let's say L, and this distance here is change in length. And so we define strain as the change in length over original length, or L minus LO over LO. So you can see the strain, as, as we define it here, is some type of normalization, right? We, 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 we have the change in length, and we normalized it by the original length. Why? Why do we normalize it by the original length? Why not the final length? Why not normalize it by the final length? Why is the original length better than the final length? I'm saying, well, after, after I strain it, I stop pulling on it, well, if it's elastic, it's going to go back. But let's say I strain it to a fixed value, and I just hold it there. And I compare two materials, one steel, one aluminum. Both of them I stretch to the f same final length. Wouldn't that be a valid way to compare the strain between the two? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why can't I normalize it by the length of that wall over there? It's a trick question. I can't. I can't. I can choose to normalize it by whatever I want to normalize it by. And so the point I'm trying to make here is that this is, in fact, not called the strain. It's called the engineering strain. And it's very important. It's very important that you label your strain. It's very important, especially when you're talking about inelasticity. And I'll, and I'll show you why in a second. So let me give you a different de definition. Of course, I mean, one, <coughs> a, a different definition of strain uh, would be that I could, I could take the final length or just, uh, I, could, I could take, oops, the same change in length, the same change in length and normalize it by the final length, right? Th that's another version of strain. And, uh, Sometimes you'll you'll hear that called something like a, a Larian strain. You probably have to go to a graduate course to hear this, but but the more common one would be when you when you say that it, it, in the limiting case, right? In the limiting case where <coughs> my delta L is an infinitesimally small value. My delta L is infinitesimally small, so dL, and I'm going to normalize it by the instantaneous length. Right, so this is the case where I'm going to take a little tiny infinitesimally small increment delta L and, and then at that, that value of L normalize it. And I'm going to do that, you know, I'm going to add up a bunch of instantaneous dLs so that I'm going to integrate from 0 to, you know, let's say L final. And, and this is what we call the true strain. Or sometimes also you'll see it called a logarithmic strain, a log strain. And it's because the solution of this guy, you end up with a, a log, logarithmic, the natural value of L. <coughs> the, the natural log of L. Uh, so the point here is, especially when you have elasticity. So if I just have stress versus strain, if I have a elastic material, the elastic response, the elastic response may only be like 0.02% of the total strain. It's a very, very small. 
Whereas you have, you can have, especially you know, for rocks under compression, they can exhibit lots of inelasticity, right? So then you have this very large inelastic region. And the difference out here in this inelastic region between the engineering strain and the true strain can be very, very appreciable. So in other words, you might see something like where this is the engineering strain and the same, you know, it's the same experiment, right? I'm doing the same experiment. It's just how I, how I define my strain could result in a plot that looks like that versus a plot that looks like this, where this is, would be the true strain. So it's very important. Because if I said, what's the stress at 10% strain? What's the stress at 10% strain? Well, it depends. Are you talking about engineering strain or true strain? It's a big difference when you have appreciable inelasticity. Now, down here in the elastic region, there's, there's no difference. Okay. It's, or it's very, very small. So it's important to label your strain. And I can't tell you how many talks I go to that you, know, you just see stress versus strain, showing experimental results. If it's a, if it's a computation or something, some theoretical, I mean, it's, it's, it, we're sort of always talking about the true strain. You know. But, you know, if it's, a, if it's an experiment, you know, how do we measure strain in an experiment? We do exactly, what, you know, we measure the change in length over the original length, right? Well, that's engineering strain. So it turns out you can convert between the two, convert between engineering and true strain. 